from the Watergate Building in Washington, this is Hotline TV. Now, here are Hotline Editors Chuck Todd and John Mercurio. Got some early presidential press, a holiday reader's guide, and a brewing Democratic turf war. Hello, everybody. I'm Chuck Todd. And I'm Nora McElvana. Welcome to Hotline TV. Today, we're inviting our staff writers to sound off on their favorite hot topics and the stuff that they cover the closest. Nora, you're one of our presidential writers. You obsess over Clinton and Obama these days. Obsessed. You're handling but Obsessed, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. an obsession. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Clinton and Obama, it's turning into this turf war. It's turning into Clinton probably will start showing up in Chicago soon, but Obama this week was up in New York City, and the New York City Press Corps couldn't get enough of Obama. Tell us about it. Yeah, I think, uh, I disagree, though. I think that they would, I thought he sort of went in there in and out unnoticed, and I think that Hillary got the, the upper hand this week with her phone calls and... And why, why is that? What, what is it, you know, are they starting to criticize Obama? Why, why, why do you think that Hillary had the upper hand this week with Obama? I think that people have been waiting for the, for this, this Hillary uh, anything. So a series of calculated phone calls, anything, calling the Cuomos or whoever. That, that proved to be more important than uh, a you know foray, foray into her backyard or... Is Obama being too, are the Clintons being too negative? Are some of the Clinton supporters, what was it, one of his, one of her fundraisers came out and just really laid into Obama. He's inexperienced. He can't win. This is crazy. You think that's calculated or are those people sort of working off their own script? I think we're starting to see debuts of an attack that they're going to use against Obama that he's obviously inexperienced, but that's going to get old. And I think that they're going to sort of need to debut something else. I think you're going to have a uh, Eventually, it's going to be that he is inexperienced, but it's going to be have, have to be more than that. What is it going to be? I don't know. What's your opinion? Well, we'll see. I mean, That's I think that, that they got to be careful here of getting too negative, because Obama's whole message is that he's not a negative guy and that he's not a polarizing figure. And if the Clintons start acting too aggressive, it actually plays into Obama's message. So I think they're trying to walk a, a fine line here. How has Obama been helpful to Hillary? I don't know that he necessarily has or hasn't. I think the the Obama versus Hillary is is overplayed. He doesn't really, or in the long term, he's not going to hurt her base because he hasn't been. You know, he's not the liberal favorite. What has he done that's liberal recently? You well, know? no, he hasn't done anything that's liberal. Right, but what so. what about freezing the field? I mean, doesn't it helpful to Hillary that Edwards isn't in the Edwards isn't in the picture she, right now? She, what she would have done anyway is what we're seeing now but in february she this is exactly how hillary would run a campaign a she's calculated she's meticulous she's going down a list and obama i think she's not affected by that i, had, I had a consultant friend of mine equate it to you know she's running he's a big track guy so he she's running the 10,000 meter race and obama's running an 800 meter race mm -hmm. obama's what full speed and he may be good enough to do it, and he may be on a world record pace, and maybe he'll finish, and maybe he's as great as everything. But she is not plotting to win December. She's plotting to win right. the next two years. This Sunday, Obama will be in New Hampshire, and he's having a meetings with 2,000 people, a sold-out event. She's having dinner with one person in her house from New Hampshire, and I think that sort of characterizes says, says how... how what we're going to see from the two of them. Well, let's wrap it up there, Nora. Right. Thanks for coming. Thanks well for done. having me. Joining us now is Hotline staff writer Catherine Lear, who follows the business end of politics for us. Catherine, you've been crunching numbers forever. Tell us about the consultants with the best year. We're going to go three categories, mail, media, and polls. Let's start with mail firms. Who had a who just had a phenomenal year in the mail side? Well, it's quite obvious uh, most of the Republican consulting firms took a beating. Um, in a wave year, that seems to happen. But it's interesting always that, that sometimes some of them survive, right? Right. And so, well, so they all make money. <laughs> right. Very true. And okay. lots of it. Um, but it left most of the Democrats in the winner's circle. Um, for mail, for starters, uh, Ambrosino, Muir, and Hansen came out with uh, eight wins and three losses. Not to forget a 10 and 0 in the primary oh, season. Very good. They got um, about that. Yeah. San Francisco, and they, and they get to live in San Francisco. Exactly. Which is, you know, they're not living here, so that's why they're really happy. <laughs> 
And um, they came out on top in some pretty competitive races, including uh, Claire McCaskill in Missouri Senate. Um, okay. Ambrose done a lot of Missouri races over the years. Yeah, in White House in uh, Rhode Island. Um, also in Governors, they did Martin O'Malley in Maryland and Jim Doyle in Wisconsin. So really, so they were in some real races. Landscape. Okay. Yeah. Any Republican male friends you want to do a shout out to? Um, not, not on this the positive cycle. side, not unfortunately. Not on this cycle. Not All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the media. Let's jump to the um, media. Who had, who had one of the better media side. Yeah, we definitely have to mention Dixon Davis, uh, nine and zero, also with McCaskill and um, O'Malley. Uh, David Dixon and Rich Davis, always, always entertaining guys to uh, to chat with as well. And very but creative. McCaskill, massive McCaskill, big win. Uh, definitely, and also Next um, generation of media consultants. Uh, Right, and on the health side, um, they're responsible for Joe Courtney's win over Rob Simmons in Connecticut too. Just came down to for, under 100 votes. And, and for Rich Davis, this was personal. He one time was Sam Gadenson's chief of staff and originally lost to Rob Simmons way back when, so that must have felt extra good Some for vengeance. Rich. Kudos, Rich. Some vengeance. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we can't move on from media without noting some of the Republican firms that actually fared pretty well uh, considering the Absolutely. landscape. And who is that? Um, the strategy group for media out of Ohio. They also have an office in Austin. Mm -hmm. um, they went 10-1. and one. Um, Again, also in the House races, they held on to Colorado 4 from Musgrave. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in contentious atmosphere of Ohio, we're able to hold on to Ohio 1 with um, Steve Chabot and well with Pat Tiberi. It'll be interesting uh, how well they are able to market this because usually firms that do it, that are on the wrong side of a wave that can do well, sometimes that's when they make their leap to the next level. Right. We'll see if we see them in a lot of statewide races. And in it'll be interesting to watch. We talked to them and they uh, talked about how the key this cycle was localizing the election, taking it off of that national landscape. Um, Easy to say, hard yeah. to do in this type of wave. And let's jump to polling real quick. What okay. do we got there on the upside? Um, also, uh, Dem Polster here, Global Strategy Group, went 21 and 3. Most, n most, Jeff uh, Pollock got to be feeling really good. Very good. Yeah, he had Chet Culver. He had a bunch of people. There. Yeah, and Spitzer in New York, uh, which Spitzer, was, yeah, which was their big run. Uh, and also, uh, we can't forget to mention public opinion strategies, uh, GOP firm. Just sheer volume of clients helped them win 52 and 29. They also did some polling for Joe Lieberman in Connecticut. Well, they did, and they had some, you know, the lone survivors in the Northeast, I think almost are all are POS clients. That's why they still seem to be king. All right, I guess we'll get a little negative. Let's go fast because okay. these are all friends of Hotline, and we don't want to make, make them mad, but who had some rough years? Um, in the mail department, definitely majority communications. Um, strong showing the primary came out 11 and 2 and ended 2 and 8 in the Oof. general. Way too many competitive races. Yeah, right? they had talent Wrong in Missouri, Wrong side Chafee of those in Rhode swing. Island. Wrong side of the swing races. Hey, they were in tough states. Yeah. Got to give them kudos I mean, for going into exactly. tough states. Exactly. Media. Um, we have Anthem Media, 8-1 and one in the primary, ending up 0-7 oh, in once. the general. That's always right. Um, house races they lost in Georgia, Matt Collins and um, Max Burns. Uh, no Democratic incumbent in the country was able to lose, I think, except in state treasurer in South Carolina. So, right. you know, they're Again, not alone. Just tough atmosphere they're not across alone. the board. They're not alone. And who had the toughest on the polling? Um, definitely the Terrence group. Again, came out 16 and 8 in the primaries and ended 7 and 8. Um, DeWine in Ohio, they had hard some of the race to win. Clients. Yeah. To, to, their, to, their, to their defense, they had some tough guys when you're having to deal with Mike DeWine, who didn't commit the fireable offense and lost anyway. Right. What are you going to do? Catherine, thanks for doing Thank this. Thank you. Thanks for making all these enemies yeah. uh, on the consulting front. <laughs> I'm looking and forward to the emails. Don't be canceling those subscriptions. <laughs> so what do you get the political junkie this holiday season? They have enough ties. They have enough collectible bumper stickers. So what about a good book? Because I think that's what I'm going to end up with. There are lots and lots of books. Hotline staff writer Shira Tuplitz joins us now to talk about the top reads authored by presidential candidates, or excuse me, Ghost authored in the name of presidential candidates. Co authored, yeah, whatever co -authored. that means. Some of them, uh, you know, like our friend, we'll talk about these books, John McCain, you right. know, who Book always assistant. acknowledges, no, always acknowledges right. Mark Salter. Of course. Salter actually gets to have his name on the book jacket, not with these other guys. But That's nice let's talk about some of these books. Um, what are the books out there? We got the McCain book. What's the McCain book about? The McCain book is called Hard Call, and it's very similar to his other book. Does he work for Hotline? Wake Up Call, Last Call, Hard Call? Is no, this our midnight edition? No, but that's what edition? we should name our next feature. Yeah, this will be, be the midnight that's good, edition. That's good. The Hard Call. <laughs> so, um, Hard Call, what's it about? Hard what's Call the... goes through six qualities that he thinks good leaders have. Mm -hmm. They are awareness, timing, confidence, foresight, humility, and inspiration. 
Interesting. So yes, he's on this whole leadership kick. You might as well call it Leadership Volume 2 after his other book that went through the qualities of great leaders. It's in that same vein. Here's what I find fascinating about this book is that it seems, the theme of the book, it seems very much aimed at Rudy's strength and very much aimed at Romney's strength. Romney's the business guy. Right. So you'd expect a book like this from a business guy. Mm -hmm. And Rudy's been, he wrote a leadership book and does these mm -hmm. leadership speeches. Is that what we think that's what's going on here? Sort of like McCain yeah. saying, you know what, I'm this guy, too. I'm the best of both of them. Exactly. He's basically trying to prove to everyone that he has these qualities. He's trying to introduce himself as John McCain. I am the leader. I could be president. You know, you can see me as this solitary figure. I'm not just a senator. Oh, that's interesting. So, What other books are out there? Well, John Edwards just released a book uh, called Home. It's about his personal life, which is going to be interesting, his early personal life. So lots of pictures, did a big tour in Iowa. The first America, the first North Carolina. Which, Something like yeah, that. Something yeah. about a steel mill. Well, Jonathan, yeah. word, I, I hear Jonathan Prince is among the people that has helped John Edwards put this book together, Excellent. but I don't think he is. I think he's an un, unnamed, un, unnamed co-author. He's not as lucky as Mark uh, Salter. Uh, on this one, though, Jonathan Prince has had his, he's had his uh, parts in plenty of books over the years. He Excellent. is, he is, Excellent. He is a, one of the better writers on the Democratic side. We're seeing um, a lot of re-releases as well. Hillary Clinton is coming out with It Takes a Village with a new forward again in the spring. Oh, interesting. So, Why uh, come out with a new, a new one? Isn't Bill Clinton got a new book coming too? Isn't he going to be coming out, I think, in the summer? Possibly. <laughs> Scare everybody to death. <laughs> Who else has got a book? Wes Clark, right? We have Wes Clark coming out with America's Son, and that will be in Follow 7. Most mm -hmm. of these are coming out in Follow 7, so unless you know someone, Good they Lord. might not be They might not be there for but Christmas. But Follow 7, I mean, these guys are going to be bumping into each other at the Barnes & Noble book signings. I, I mean, think. pretty much, yeah. You're going to see a lot of book tours. And if Obama releases his third book, doesn't he still have one more book in that multi-million dollar contract? Mm -hmm. I wonder when that's going to come out. Huh, fall of 07? Possibly. Or maybe he's going to get a little presumptuous and maybe make it spring of 08. Maybe, maybe. It's a good reason. He does get people waiting in the rain for four hours just to see him sign a book. Touch him. So, it's all about touching but him. You just got to touch him. Yeah, there you go. And then you touch the rock star. There, there it is. Shira. So. Thanks for doing the book. Thanks Absolutely. for being book notes. <laughs> book notes. No offense, Brian Lamb, but book notes with Sherrod Tuplitz. Right. There's the two minute. There's the two minute warning, and oh my God, there's like yet another new staff writer sitting next to me. And it's time to get out of here before Brian Lamb gets really pissed. Hey, Chuck. Uh, Democratic leaders say they're going to make Congress work five days a week. Who's hurt most by that decision? Easy answer, us. Now we've got to cover these guys five days a week, and our friends at Congress Daily and Roll Call and The Hill, who all suddenly have to have five-day-a-week job. Real Sorry, sense. guys. Page Six reported that Lindsay Lohan sent a drunken email to her lawyers and friends suggesting Al Gore offer to help her rehabilitate her image. What does Gore do? What does Gore's image do for uh, Lindsay? I don't know. I just know that, uh, that Britney Spears is looking for us. Yeah, it's inconvenient. Oh, New York City Mayor, lies. there you go. New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg admitted to reporters recently that there's no way he's five foot ten, as his driver's license claims. If he runs, Chuck, is America ready for a short president? Jimmy Carter was a short president, and we know how well that president did. That. An American Airlines flight made an unscheduled stopover in Nashville this week after passengers reported smelling lit matches. It turns out the matches were one woman's attempt to cover up some unpleasant odors, shall we say. The best thing is this. Uh, this flight originated at National. Mm -hmm. Reed, you weren't on that flight, were you? No, I wasn't on the flight, but I gotta tell you, the gas is just getting more and more expensive these days. All the time. There we go. Finally, Chuck, uh, Defense Secretary Robert Gates was confirmed this week in a 95 to 2 vote. The two votes uh, against, uh, against him came from Republican Senators Rick Santorum, who lost his re-election bid, and Jim Bunning, who seems to vote against everyone. Has Bunning totally lost it, oh, Chuck? No, no, no. Gates just hates the Phillies. And this is just Bunnings, which is pissed off about that. <laughs> hey! There's the buzzer. And that wraps up another episode of an all-star episode, our all-star cast of Holiday TV. Join us next week for our preview of our coming holiday specials. I'm Reed Wilson. I'm Chuck Todd. We'll see you next week on Hotline TV.